Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe After Effects tutorial where today we're going to take a look at creating a beautiful and stunning cinematic titler that looks a little something like this. Ah, look at that. We're going to cover exactly how to do all of that and more in Adobe After Effects right now. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that little bell to turn those notifications on so you never miss another Adobe After Effects or video editing tutorial in the future. And let's jump right into After Effects. Well, okay, okay, here we are in Adobe After Effects. I've got uh, the piece of aerial footage here that is going to serve as the intro for our little film about, I don't know, Ireland or something. And we need to add our little title to this that's going to work with this super moody looking aerial shot that we've got. So I'm going to kick this thing off by grabbing my text tool and I'm going to type out the word silhouette. So that's S-I-L-H-O-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Silhouette's one of those tricky words to spell, so you got to be careful here when you're spelling it. And I'm going to look to my character panel here and I'm going to go with the typeface Futura. In fact, I'm just going to type it in. And specifically, I'm going to roll with Futura. Now well, let's go Futura book. I think that looks pretty good. I'll go like 250 pixels for the size. Yeah, I think that's all right. I'm going to set my tracking here to 400. That's going to really space these letters out. Well, that was not the tracking. That was the line height that I just set. Let's undo that and select the tracking. There we go, 400, as you can see. Uh, and I think I'm going to change the weight from book. Let's change it to light. Yeah, I think that's what I'm after. I also, by the way, have all caps turned on here. If you just hit the little flyout menu, I've got all caps turned on. And then down here in the paragraph panel, I also have it aligned center. And then I'm going to use the proper align panel. Make sure I align the layer to the composition. And I'm going to align it horizontally and vertically just right there. So it's kind of hanging out in the center of our video. One other thing I'll do is hit the letter T, which you can see it's going to bring up our opacity control down here. I'm going to set this to like 75% opacity just so it has some pass through and uh, semi opaqueness to it. Now I'm going to select this text layer, hit command or control D to duplicate it. And what we'll do is we will go back to our character panel. I'm going to set the size of this text to 75 pixels and I'm going to get rid of all the tracking. So I'm going to get rid of this tracking entirely and let's grab our move or our selection arrow here. I'm just going to drag this straight down to maybe right about there. Double click on the text and you can type whatever you want. I'm just going to type like Tutvid Cinema or something like that. I think that's all right. And for this, we'll reduce the opacity a little bit more. So hit the letter T and we'll go opacity like 55%. You got to be careful going too low with the opacity because while over this particular shot, it looks good. If there's any kind of change in the shot, it, that text will disappear in a hurry. If you've got it down at like 20, 25% opacity between the thin text and the very, very light opacity, uh, it, can, it can hide, it can make itself scarce in a hurry. I'll put it to you that way. I'm going to collapse the text layer there. Now we're going to create a new camera. So I'm going to right click over here in the layers area. I'm going to go new. I'm going to choose camera. This is where things get fun, right? If you know a thing or two about cameras and you enjoy playing with them as I do, uh, some of this will make sense to you in terms of the millimeter focal length, some of this aperture and f-stop stuff should really get you, get you really hyped up. Uh, if you don't really mess around with the cameras too much, don't even worry about that because it's really not that complex. And honestly, it, you don't really need to know what all's going on here to make this part work. But it sure does look cool, doesn't it? I'm going to go with a preset of 35 millimeter. So I'm going to choose a 35 millimeter camera. I'm going to make sure that enable depth of field is checked on. And I'm going to set my aperture here, not the 6.25, but rather 100 millimeters, which is a, a gaudy f-stop of 0.35. In, in real life, that would be a quite an expensive lens. This will render a rather shallow depth of field. I'll put it to you that way. So I'm going to hit OK here. And you can see After Effects gives us this little warning. Camera and lights do not affect 2D layers. Select a layer and choose layer 3D. Well, there's actually a little bit of an easier way to do this. We don't have to hunt around in the menus. I'm going to say, all right, After Effects, thank, thanks for the heads up, but uh, I think I know what I'm doing here. I can come down here into the layers panel, and for the silhouette and camera, or I'm sorry, the silhouette and the, the Tutvid Cinema text, lens, uh, text lenses, like I said, I know what I'm doing, right? Maybe After Effects had a point. For the silhouette and Tutvid Cinema text layers, we're going to come over here to this like 3D looking box, and we're just going to tick those two layers on. Those two layers are now uh, have 3D enabled, if you will. And now what I want to do in order to kind of control the movement of this text, we're going to change the way we're viewing our video. I'm going to choose from views down here. I'm going to go to views. I can say horizontal. That's fine. And you can see it's just side by side. And I've got this interesting top down view over here. In fact, if I zoom this out a little bit, maybe make it like 25%. Oh, I got the wrong camera selected. Let's go back to 50%. Uh, I'm going to select the top side here and let's go like 25%. And I select this, or rather, I select the camera. You can see here that 
it's showing me this is essentially the location of the camera. The little white box is the camera, and it's pointing its lens this way, and this is the depth of field that it's seeing. So the little tiny thing that it's, the, the flat thing that it's focused on is our text in front of our video. So you can think about it this way. If this little white box down here, which we can't quite see, is the camera, and what it's focused on is right here on this very final horizontal line, you can see that if I hover over and select an object, right, I'm selecting the very, very super top thin edge of like the Tutvid Cinema text. And this other very flat object, well, it's sort of like the very top thin edge of the silhouette text. And of course, that stuff is super sharp here in our video because why? Well, because the camera's focused on it. But if I animate the position of my camera and make it zoom along the Z axis in space, which would, which would essentially be the camera zooming in or out, this text, well, it's going to get really, really blurry or not, depending on where it falls in this camera's focal range. Now that still might seem super complicated, so let's just do it. With the camera selected here in the layers area, hit the letter P to swing down the position options. Now notice, we have our X, Y, and Z option here. So now the idea here is going to be to have the silhouette text appear as though it is zooming out. So we want the camera to begin very close to the text. So we're actually going to, I'm, I'm going to drop a keyframe here to begin animation, because we're not even going to animate the text, we're going to animate the camera. And what we'll do is we'll set the Z axis. Let's try setting it to like, I don't know, let's try 100 and just see where that puts us. Now you can see something very interesting happens here. The camera completely inverts itself. Now we don't necessarily want our camera to flip around like this. It's actually an easy fix. We can just right click on the camera layer, go transform, choose auto orient. And I'm going to say, look, just shut off the auto orientation, hit OK. And you can see there we are. Now you can see over here in the active, the active camera area, that text has completely disappeared because the camera through which we're viewing this bit of text has actually zoomed beyond our text. You know, if, if this video is actual 3D, the camera is a little bit closer to this cliff face than our text is, right? And if I were to take the camera and begin zooming it out, well, you're going to see our text is going to begin appearing as this blurred blobby mass, right? And as the camera moves further and further away, well, it's going to be as though it's zooming back out. So I just want to just set my Z-axis to something where the camera is a little bit behind the face of the text. I think something around 100, like right there, whatever, 86, that works fine. That's our first keyframe. I like it. Now we're going to move out to about the three second mark out here. So I'm going to go about three seconds. And by the way, I can hover over the top down camera, see how it just says Z. I can just click and drag this and it's going to animate along the Z axis. And I'm looking to just keep dragging this back and back and back. I'm going to go back to like 25% here. I'm going to drag this back, 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 back until that pink line is right about where we need it to be. And that's where our text will again be in focus. It's going to ensure perfectly sharp text just like we want. Now I'll select both of these keyframes here. And we'll right click, we'll go keyframe assistant. Maybe we'll easy ease in for this particular effect. And I'm gonna move back to here and let's preview the effect. So you can see very cool. And the blurriness that we have, like when the text is at this point, that's because of the aperture setting that we set on our 3D camera. Now, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to move my playhead out to here, maybe like right around here, right before the text is about to move entirely into sharp focus. And we're going to add a little foggy blur to the Tutvid Cinema text, uh, just, just to make things a little more interesting. So I'm going to come up here to the Effects and Presets menu, and I'm going to search for an effect called Foggy. And you can see it's under Blurs, Foggy Blur. I'm going to drag and drop it right on that Tutvid Cinema text. And it's basically going to begin here where I drop it. So I'm dropping it right here just past the two second mark. I can drop down the Tutvid Cinema layer. I'm going to just put Transform back up to where it, where it goes. And if I twirl down text here, you can see there's my foggy animator. And if I twirl that down and twirl down range selector, you can see the offset right here. It's beginning right here at two seconds. And it'll continue a little past four seconds. If I want it to happen a little faster, I suppose I could move the keyframe. But I kind of like the way it is. And we can just play through this once more and watch to see what we've got. Let me just collapse my text just so it's not looking as complex as it is. I'll collapse the camera as well. Let's check it out. Ah, and look at how beautiful and smooth that is. Very, very cool. Now, at this point, maybe this is the exact piece of video. And by the way, I'm going to go back to one view here. Maybe this is the exact piece of video that you're going to be using for your intro, and you just want to export it like this out of After Effects. Fine, but maybe it's not, and you're not sure if this is a video you're going to use or not, but you like this as your uh, clean cinematic title. Well, you can always shut off your video, right, and just preserve the text and ship this over to the render queue. We can go File, Export. 
and choose to add it to the render queue. And here in the render queue, well, let me delete these other two cinematic titles. It's almost as if I've pre-run this tutorial. Oh, I can click on the word lossless here and just choose for my channels in the video output section to output RGB plus alpha. That will ensure that I get a transparent background. What does that mean? Well, it means that I can take this into something like Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci or a Final Cut Pro and apply it over any video clip that I have there in one of those video editors. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead, well, you can choose where you want to save the file to on your hard drive, and then just boom, render out that video clip, and you've got a finished final cinematic title that you're rendering out of Adobe After Effects with a transparent background. Or of course, if you don't need the transparent background, leave your piece of video in there, and it's all the same. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, you took a thing or two away from it uh, for using the foggy effect for the 3D cameras, for text and spacing and opacity and just making a cool-looking title in Adobe After Effects. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.